Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on natural selection. So we've talked quite a bit about natural selection in class, and I know you studied this in Bio 1. Uh, we're going to start our discussion of natural selection with an example. So let's say that I have a population of rabbits, and the most common phenotype in the population is to have white fur. But I also have some rabbits that have brown fur. And let's say that the predator in this ecosystem is a coyote. So this is very similar to where we live. Well, the coyotes are going to go ahead and they're going to hunt the rabbits. So in a typical grasslands biome, what would happen if I have this population? So I'm going to have a whole bunch of little white rabbits and some little brown rabbits, but most of my rabbits are white. I think what you'll see is going to happen is that the coyotes are going to very quickly um, be able to find the white rabbits in the ecosystem because white does not really blend in in our typical grassland. If you're brown, you're going to have an advantage because you're going to be more similar in coloring to the ground. Um, so you're going to have some cryptic coloration uh, advantage. So the brown rabbits have a selective advantage over the white rabbits. So what would happen um, is in the next generation, you're going to have the white rabbits go ahead, and if this is a genetic trait, are going to go ahead and produce more white rabbits. And the brown rabbits, if this is a genetic trait, are going to go ahead and produce more brown rabbits. Now, the rabbits, this has to be a genetic trait because otherwise this doesn't make any sense, right? So you'll see in our population now the frequency of brown rabbits is higher than the frequency of brown rabbits was in the starting population. So again, the coyotes go through. They're going to go ahead and eat some of the white rabbits because those are easier to find. And then in this next generation, you're going to see that the population is going to be exclusively or almost exclusively brown rabbits. So that's basically what natural selection is in a nutshell. It's just organisms that have a little bit of an advantage in their ecosystem surviving and having offspring and passing that advantage on to their offspring if it is in fact a genetic advantage. So we need to talk about fitness and how fitness relates to natural selection. Fitness, you guys hear all the time, survival of the fittest. And what that actually means is that individuals that are more fit are going to have a better potential to survive and thus reproduce in their ecosystem. Because if you don't survive, then you can't reproduce. And that's what we really mean by fitness. The fitness of an organism is its ability to survive and reproduce in its ecosystem. So fitness is survivorship, and it is also fecundity, which is just a measure of uh, its reproductive success. So how is natural selection going to work? Well, there's a couple things that have to happen for natural selection to work. The first thing you have to have is you have to have genetic variation within the population. So in our sample population on the first um, slide, what we had was we had genetic variation in coat color. We had a white phenotype and we had a brown phenotype. And if those are genetic, then we're seeing genetic variation in the population. It has to be genetic because it has to be able to be passed down to offspring through the DNA. The next thing you need to have for natural selection to work is you need to have more offspring actually being produced than the environment can support. So um, my environment has a certain carrying capacity. There's more offspring being born into that ecosystem than can possibly survive in that ecosystem. And then what you're going to see is that the organisms that are best suited for their environment are going to be the ones that are the most likely to survive. And that's really what we mean by survival of the fittest. So the organisms that are well suited to their environment are going to survive and they're going to reproduce and they're going to pass those traits on to their offspring. And those traits are going to spread throughout the population and it takes a couple generations. So over time that's going to happen. It's not going to happen right away. And remember, we're not talking about um, we're not talking about an adaptation appearing through an entire population in one generation. What happens is selection acts on individual organisms. So if you're not fit in your ecosystem, if you have a low fitness, like you can't survive, uh, if you don't reproduce, then you have a low fitness, 
then you are going to be selected against. So if I was a white bunny and the coyote came and ate me, that's strong selection against me. And it's not going to allow me to pass my genes on to the next generation. Um, if I'm a brown bunny, that is allowing me to survive. And so then I can pass my traits on to the next generation. But the evolution of the population, that natural selection, that's going to happen over time as the traits shift through that population. The genes have to spread throughout. So that's pretty much all that I want to talk about about natural selection in a nutshell. Those are the four things that you have to know about natural selection. Uh, and I hope that helps.